from your perspective? Yeah, as expected, a very difficult game today against a quality team. Um, thought that uh, in the first half, you know, our game plan was executed to perfection. Um, we wanted to remain compact. We knew that opportunities would arise from that with the turnovers of possession and the space left in behind. Um, and we, I think, deservedly took the lead. Uh, what was important today was for us to be clinical, and I thought that's exactly what we were. We took our chances very, very well. And um, yeah, my fear was always that when you poke the bear, you must be careful of what's going to come. And that's exactly what happened in the second half. Um, we started the second off brightly. Makubu could have squared the ball for Fornal early in the second half, uh, but we didn't. And um, exactly what I warned them at halftime happened. The opponent gets one goal, the crowd gets behind them, it's going to be back to the wall stuff, and that's exactly as it panned out. I said to the coach after the game, uh, the better team lost today. Um, we worked very, very hard. We tried to be as structured and organized as possible, but um, at the end, we just about held on with that onslaught from Orlando Pirates. Um, so credit must go to them for not giving up and dominating us the way that they did. But that was always expected against one of the informed teams in the league. I thought my young team today, I had six players that don't have 10 Premier League appearances. I thought they were exceptional in the way they executed our game plan, but also the work ethic throughout the team, I would say for the first hour of the game was totally, totally exceptional. So credit to the club, credit to the players. I think um, the hard work they're putting in that first hour they were finally rewarded for it. An historical day for the club. It's the first encounter against Orlando Pirates. And to come out with a victory um, is, is, is a step in the right direction for Magasi Football Club. We're now open for questions from the floor. As per now, uh, show of hands, please identify yourself and wait for me to direct you where the microphone is going. <laughs> identify yourself as well as the media company you present prior to asking a question. Now you may give me the microphone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Clinton, what does this do in terms of um, giving you your players confidence that you belong in the big show, that um, you can compete on a, on a week-in, week-out basis? I mean, not only the excitement of going to a quarter-final, but is there more value to the fact that it's just such a, a huge confidence booster? Yeah, I think, uh, Mark, looking at our, the way we started the league, just to move away from the cup, we lost our first two. Confidence was low, went away to arrows won following game drew against AM and all of a sudden the belief grew and I think backing up those two positive league results with a cup win will do so much for the confidence of the players you know I say sometimes they're like deers in the headlight um, it's the first time they're playing on these stages you know first time rubbing shoulders with national team players and I understand that as a former footballer um, so you know I've, I've kept reminding them we've all started this way you've got to start somewhere you know, but you've got to learn quicker, grow quicker in the game and not be swallowed up. And um, I think with each game that we play, lessons are learned. Um, even from today's victory, there are some hard lessons learned. I mean, late in the game, we had a throw ball, could have gone to the corner flag and got a throw. We go out along, Menzi flicks it to the keeper, it ends up in the back of our goal. And these are some of the lessons that these young kids should learn and, and should know at this level of the game. But um we hope that like i said with each game that passes they grow in confidence and also from a, a, a tactical perspective we've got to grow much quicker than we currently are um, you speak about the confidence of the players but yourself as well um, I, if i'm not mistaken it's four years outside of the top flight um is this like a result that says welcome to the big leagues welcome back mm. to the big leagues for yourself um because i mean this is a pirate team with 11 games unbeaten to start the season yeah. and this is the first defeat yeah i think personally for myself i've always said i've never been obsessed with coaching in the psl hence i went down to the abc Motsepe for two seasons and it's my second year in Limpopo and not many coaches last two years in Limpopo. So, um, you know, 
it, it hasn't been easy. I was away for a while, but I was working, you know, and um, even though I wasn't present in the Premier League, I kept myself abreast of what was going on, you know, so coming back for me, um, it wasn't the most important thing. I think the club, um, with the amount of effort, the management in particular, the chairman put into the team, they deserve to get here. Are we ready? Mm, maybe not, but we're growing quickly and we've got a long, long way to go as a club to improve in all facets of the game. And um, we'll keep trying to educate the people around us, trying to improve the club. And um, I think with this young group of players, the potential is there. Yes, we're short of four to five really, really quality players, but with the limit, with the limited budgetary constraints that we've got as a club, it's very difficult to bring those type of caliber of players in. And I understand that as a coach. So we'll keep working with what we've got and try to squeeze every last bit of potential out of the players that we've got. Robert, uh, Sia from Cuba, congratulations on the win. Uh, in the first half, from a technical point of view, I wanted to ask, uh, what do you feel was was the the key in terms of sort of your team dominating the first half? What were your, what was your team doing better than than and, and what went wrong in, in the second half? Yeah, I think um, in the first half, we knew they're going to want to penetrate through, through the middle. You know, we practiced the entire week giving their, their wide players the ball. Rather, we defend crosses, you know, instead of them penetrating through the middle. So you could see the compactness um, out of position was very, very strong. They couldn't penetrate us and that worked for us. And as a result, it created lots of turnovers, which we produced break attacks from. And, and that worked really worked well for us. What happened in the second half? Pirates came alive. <laughs> it's as simple as that. The pirates that didn't show up in the first half, maybe through our good organization, really had nothing to lose but throw caution to the wind. And I was expecting that, hence no celebrations. I knew we had poked the bear. Be ready, or be ready for the onslaught that's coming. And yeah, like I said, we finally just managed to see the game out. The score line. If Oh, well done. <laughs> um, firstly, if you remember my small Celtics team. I think it was 2010-11 against Sundowns that won 5-0. It's always possible to win football matches with a good strategy and a good execution by the players. I believe that the way that we prepared for this game, that there were goals to be had. There were goals to be had based on how our opponent plays. The difference was whether we were going to expose them at the right moments. So I wasn't surprised that we scored the three goals first half to answer your question. What type of players do we have? We have got a young group of players. I just explained earlier, six of them, including Wonderboy Makubu, have not played more than 10 games in the Premier League. Five have got four games that started today. The four games we've played in 23 to 24-25 uh, to, uh, season. So when you look at the, the collective experience in my group of players, it's very, very low. But the one thing we can always make up for with that lack of experience is our work ethic, our organization, and I never say die attitude. Um, we're not the most talented team. As the head coach, I'm the first one to say that. But one thing we'll never be asked is whether we put in maximum effort. And we have got an honest group of players with all their technical flaws. <laughs> We've got an honest group of players that will always give their best, win, lose or draw. Um, Coach, uh, congratulations on the victory and going through. Um, I was just looking at the structure of your team, especially the back four and also the number six. And I think that will mm -hmm. just in front of them and the technical discipline. And I was just looking also maybe the results of even Bafana Bafana, uh, that a South African team or South African players, when you give them um, a good structure and tactical discipline, 
they will give you the result. Is that what that my analysis is right in terms of what we talk about? And also maybe if you can touch on, uh, you say you you, you not have the ambition. Could that also be, uh, or maybe let me rephrase and say, uh, this is the value that your t the team has put in you that you couldn't go to Amazulu recently because the team has put in a, a hefty a buyout clause because they know the quality that you bring. Um, to your first point, sorry, what was it again? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't, 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 don't. Uh, Excuse me, excuse me for the microphone, and may I just also take this opportunity to ask that we keep the, the questions brief. Sure. That's why the coaches focus yeah. because the question was too long. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's about the tactical Yes, I, I agree with you. Um, you know, as, as coaches, it's our job to, to try and bring structure, organization, and like you said, tactical discipline. But it's not always easy. You know, three of my back four have played four games in the Premier League. Both McCornes as well as Delano Abrams have never played at this level before. So as much as we work on the tactical aspects of the game, there's going to be moments in games and throughout the season they'll be found wanting tactically. So... It's an ongoing process to improve them, to try to get them to the next level. And um, we're going to work very, very hard with our players to try and get them to understand the level that's required, the level of performance that's required in the Betway Premiership. This is no longer the, the, the NFD. And uh, I still feel at times we're playing like an NFD team and that has got to change in order for us to be competitive this season. Um, about your other question, I don't know anything about Amazulu um, and buyout clauses. Take the final three questions. Thank you, Mr. Shabalala, Joseph M. Sports. Um, Coach, when you spoke to us on Joseph M, you were quite adamant and you, were, you, you repeated quite a few times that you're coming here to get your victory and you're excited to play Orlando Pirates mm -hmm. because that's where your first victory is in a cup game. Um, what is it that you saw, and you as a coach, what will it mean for you to win the Cullen Knockout Cup as a club with a, a very, very small budget? Yeah, I think, um, you know, coming coming into this cup, firstly, um, when, I, when I spoke to you, um, it's the players that gave me the confidence based on what I was seeing at training. We tried to put together a certain match strategy that could expose pirates in certain moments. And when you see that working in training, it gives you confidence that it could work if well executed. And that's what the players done, you know, um, in, in, especially in the first half. So um, they're growing all the time. They make lots of mistakes. There's times we, we want longer periods of position so that we can build a rhythm. But after three, four, five passes, position is lost. So those are areas that we, we, we need to improve. And uh, uh, I'm confident we will improve that aspect of, of our game. But firstly, we need to build from the back and make sure we can become a more resolute team. We gave away two soft goals in the, in the second half today, two very soft goals. Um, so we got to be a little bit more resolute defensively in order for us to achieve our objectives this season. In the budget? Yeah, we're not a team um, with the budget, a big budget, you know. Um, there's over 20 players that I approached in the off-season and we couldn't afford them. And uh, I accepted that as a coach and we moved on to sign other players. And, um, you know, it is what it is. We will work with what we've got. We signed a lot of players that were sitting at home without clubs. And um, I heard Dan Malisela talk about a similar situation where as small to medium sized clubs, sometimes as coaches, we've got to get used to this. You know, the high caliber players are always going to be too expensive, even if it's on loan. Um, so we've got to work with the group of players that we've got. And like I said earlier, such an honest group of players. And it's my job to try and improve them week in, week out. Good afternoon, coach, and uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, my name is Marcel Kuna from Soccer Um You speak about uh, wanting them uh, going into the change of law um, in, in anticipation of what was going to happen uh, coming out from Paris. Um, what, what, what does it uh, do to you? What do you uh, tell them at halftime going into uh, halftime leading at training? 
do we now change your tactics uh, from how you had planned mm. now that we are leaving 3 0? Thank you. Yeah, well, firstly, at half time, I said to them, more of the same. You know, there was no need to change anything because we were very compact. They couldn't break us down. We scored goals from those situations. So why would there be need to change it, you know? But like I said, the inexperience in the group, even with those instructions, sometimes comes to the fore. And that's what happens. We've got an inexperienced group and Pirates, the quality team that they are exposed us in certain situations and um, we've just got to make sure now we try to um, show them the footage of the mistakes they've made and where we can do better moving forward. Can you take us on the final question? Congratulations on the future coach. Sure, thank you. Um, now that you've beaten a good team, a team that has come up to the in the land of Paris, what do you think is a realistic ambition for the club in the competition? Once you take out such a huge team, is it a matter of there's no other team that can really stop us now? No one is like mm -hmm. to beat a team like this, especially in a stadium where the fans have gone through so much as to get over the land. That that also adds to the resilience going forward in this competition. Yeah, well, firstly, I'm not naive to think that this victory today means that we can go on and win this cup. <laughs> I'm not that naive. Uh, what it does do is give us a little bit of spring in our step, um, look forward to the next draw, and try and put a better performance that we done today and see what happens. You know, um, we're the rookies in the league, first time in the cup, first time in the league. So we've got to earn our respect and work hard to earn that respect from our peers. And we'll continue to do that, and hopefully with more victories in the future. But um, I am not naive, and neither is our club, to think that we can now go and beat every anybody because we've beaten Orlando Pirates. It's a feather in our cap, yes, but every game is different. Um, so we've just got to wait for our next opponents and try and prepare as best we can and give an honest performance like we tried to do today and hope the result is a positive one. Thank you, sir. Pleasure, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.